Nothing. Writing material. Oh, this bookcase is well stocked. Oh, this book has been put back the wrong way round. A voyage around the world. The travel log of the explorer, Louis Antoine de Bougainville. One of Mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but if you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order. Barely visible. Mother, you undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. Oh, I'm not far from solving the puzzle. I must keep searching. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures, writing material. Here's something will undermine my botanist appreciation for the local climate. Hmm. Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. She must have used the writing materials. What if she used lemon juice instead? An old trick used to hide messages. message using invisible ink. I bet you use a limit to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? I think I've searched everywhere. Maybe I should try it out on the book. Aha! It's working! The heat reveals the message. Let's see what my mother wrote. Where all eyes size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, it could be anywhere. After that, she adds, beware hero. The beast always charges the best protected soldier. And that's its weakness. What is my mother trying to tell me? But you've gone to so much trouble. You must not have only found something important, but you must have also felt like you were in great danger. Now I'd better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Holm requests your presence, sir. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute.
I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. That must be the door to the room of the soldier I saw in my vision. Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. The Prince by Machiavelli. Perfect read for anyone with a surfeit of ambition. Hmm, that might come in handy. Devil's Thorn. A bicorn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. It's a beautiful weapon. Lovey Damask, my dearest son. I'm writing to implore you to... Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. My dear Napoleon. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Is this about last night? No, that was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a little bit my fault, too. There's no excuse for that man's horrible behavior. You ought to tell Sir Holmes. Look, the only thing that I care about is that I've lost something precious. I'm not worried about Jack Peru. You're her son. Sarah de Richet's son. Yes, why? Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? My mother came here to do business with Lord Mortimer, but she seems to have gone missing, so I'm here to find her. I know your mother very well. Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you? Oh, I wouldn't say nursed, no. I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh. She's getting more and more agitated. And next you're gonna tell me my mother's also responsible for that scar on your head? My heart stopped twice during the operation. I lost my memory for six months. You obviously have no idea of the abuse your mother inflicted on me. Wait, there must be some kind of mistake. My only mistake was ever meeting your mother. 
She's able to describe every detail without hesitation or getting flustered. It's becoming difficult not to believe the poor girl. Look, I've... I've gotta go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? You're right, I... I don't want this conversation to turn into an interrogation. You've suffered enough already. I, I respect your silence. Please excuse me. Well, thank you. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Haven't you got a sister? Yes. I'm sure she loves you with all her heart. She's the only one who cares about me. I would have put an end to it all by now if it weren't for her. Since you insist, I'll tell you how I met your mother. Thanks for trusting me. You see, before I was born, my mother often suffered from hallucinations and fits of anger. Soon people could barely recognize her. She became a completely different person. So my father spent an enormous amount of money paying for the best doctors, but none of them were able to cure her. The last resort was to call a priest. So, is that what your father did? No. He went to an expert in the occult. Ah, my mother. Her reputation already extended beyond our borders. My mother's fits stopped at my birth, and Sarah de Richet concluded that the evil had passed into me. Not only did it encourage her to stay, but she took the opportunity to advise my father to separate me from the rest of my family. That's how I was declared stillborn. My fate was decided that very day. It would coincide with my mother's frequent trips to America. I had my first fit when I was three. That's when your mother began her experiments to rid me of the evil inside. I understand how you feel, but I know my mother. I'm sure she had her reasons, even if it seems difficult to believe. Everything she put me through was all for nothing. My whole life was ruined for nothing. So what brings you here then? My father used to know Sir Holm. He offered to introduce me to the world's leading authority in the occult. Lord Mortimer. He was my last hope. Until I found out he had also invited your mother. It's got to be a coincidence. I don't believe for a second she's coming for you. You can't change my mind about this, Louis. My days are numbered, and I know it. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther, by Goethe, sir. And I am not hiding it. Hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend Sir a book in such a pitiful state, Sir. I took it to restore. Hang on, but it's mine. Beg pardon, Sir? It's my book. I'm telling you, it's my book. With all due respect, Sir, I hope Sir will understand that I have doubts. You see, I found it in Lord Mortimer's library. Huh. There you are, then. That's exactly where I left it. I am quite put out, Sir. I don't know what to say. In that case, I suggest you say nothing and hand it over. But I... Now! But, sir, I... Very well, sir. 
Here you are. May sir take good care of it. It is damaged. And you've damaged it as well? Well, bravo. Bravo. No, no, I didn't do anything. It wasn't me, sir. Say pardon. Pardon me, sir. Very good. There were some other things I wanted to go over with you. A little Carmelite water would do me a lot of good. Could you find me some, please? Oh, the tonics are under lock and key, sir. Lord Mortimer only allows access to them in cases of emergency. Listen, I suffer from terrible migraines, and the voyage by boat is brought on my rheumatism. So, unless you have anything else to alleviate the pain, please give me some quickly. Thank you. Oh, and, and the one from Bordeaux, right? I prefer it to the one from Paris. Immediately, sir. Here. I hope, sir, we'll get well again quickly. Anything else, sir? You wouldn't have a little golden elixir I could use, would you? Oh, unfortunately, sir, I have orders not to give any of that medicine to any of Lord Mortimer's guests. Some guests are here to follow a very strict treatment. Mixing or combining certain substances would be dangerous for sir. My good fellow, you're right. One should never mix treatments without the advice of an expert. It so happens that I usually make my own golden elixir, but I haven't brought my kit with me. Perhaps, in that case, would you fetch a spoonful of ethyl alcohol, ethereal oil, and 10 milliliters of ethanol for me. Along with that, a small quantity of gold, please. Just a few crumbs will suffice. Ah, I see that Sir knows his subject. Therefore, I see no reason why I shouldn't give them to you. I hope that will be enough for you, Sir, because I haven't any more. Thank you. That will be fine. May I help with anything else, sir? Ah, oh, I still haven't quite recovered after that boat crossing. Would you happen to have any Devil's Thorn by any chance? I, I am sorry, sir, but the Devil's Thorn may be just a plant, but it is also a powerful psychotropic drug that causes undesirable diuretic effects. I would advise against, sir, taking any. My good fellow, would you have any amber available? I would, but unfortunately I don't think I am authorized to give it out, sir. I believe it is a precious stone. No point in lying, you know. I know full well you haven't got any. I would never think of lying, sir. I don't believe I am authorized to give it away, that is all. Amber? Here? I'd be surprised. Yet, I assure you, sir. No, you're pulling my leg. I don't believe you. I wouldn't dare to joke with, sir. Yeah, sure. You're just leading me on. I dare you to show it to me, if you really have some. Well, then, sir, here is a piece. Ah, right. Well, I'm impressed. Can you lend it to me for a minute? Of course, sir. Here. Wow. I can hardly believe it. Well, I have other questions. Of course, sir. But, sir, I believe you haven't given me back the amber, sir. What? What amber? The piece I gave to sir. No, I don't know what you're talking about. You really ought to look after your things. And it can't be easy to come across amber in these parts. Ah. Um, well, does Sir desire anything else? What do you want? Mm, I'd rather keep all my teeth. D! 
Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope. The night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army. And Jacques Peru. French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Uh, Thank you again for the wine, Your Eminence. It is served every day at the King's table. I am delighted. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. <laughs> Surprising when you know Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Qua Order, former Freemason and great lover of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. And you don't see anything yet. A Prussian Britannic coalition is not good for France. The last time we fought against them, our empire went up in smoke. Is the wine to your liking? <laughs> Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rules. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same great varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. <laughs> would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small <laughs> effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mention that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. <laughs> I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. Mm -hmm. My lord, I only know the prestige of your name. Might I have the honor of getting to know you a little better? You are Monsieur Louis Maurras de Richet. <laughs> de Richet. De Richet. A name with a nobiliary particle. Are you descended from a noble line? Of course. I am just a simple French citizen. Really? Oh, you seem <laughs> nothing not like a commoner. <laughs> Especially compared to that wretch over there sharing our meal. Oh, ah. oh surely not. Have you any information on you, this sir. Napoleon? Please. Uh -huh. That's right. See, I do one. <laughs> well, what do you think, madam? 
What is this Bonaparte doing here? The presence of a soldier is never a good sign. It can only mean there's going to be further war. To answer your question, I only know that his family were in favor of the revolution, and that it almost cost them their lives. Thank you, that's helpful. Monsieur de Richet, it would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? What do you want to know? Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 Louis d'Or for 200 cannon. Surely such an amount will buy twice as many cannons. Don't try to pull a fast one on me. We're both young, but we are not naive. Please don't be offended. I just wanted to make sure you knew what you were talking about. And I am reassured. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? I think what France is lacking today is a truly strong leader ready to govern her. Someone who will restore her luster, who will propel her forward so once again she becomes a proud nation respected by all. A man capable of both rebuilding the country from the inside and, at the same time, developing exterior relations. Someone with a vision, I think. The right person still remains to be found. You're right, my friend. I hear your words and I agree. Monsieur de Richer. I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Mr. Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture, and please know that I, too, am delighted to have met you. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused.
recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. Carmelite water. The only person sizing me up here is that monumental Zeus. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? Ah, oh, I still haven't quite recovered after that boat crossing. Would you happen to have any Devil's Thorn by any chance? I, I am sorry, sir, but the Devil's Thorn may be just a plant, but it is also a powerful psychotropic drug that causes undesirable diuretic effects. I would advise against, sir, taking any. Don't worry, my good man. I know the effects of Devil's Thorn very well. I've been taking it for years without any adverse effects. I've never had cause to complain. You can believe me. That is well, sir. Here is sir's herb. What else can I do for you, sir? circles on this chest. No space left. I'll retrieve it later. Amber. Amber crystals. Chronicles of the Amber Princes. Hey, these look like pages taken from an ancient encyclopedia. Chronicles of the Amber Princes. As I recall, Dork had no space left. I'll retrieve it later.
clock is surrounded by a triple circle. Retrieved everything. Amber crystals. Atrus, the Miller brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. Atrus, the Miller brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. pages out of an old encyclopedia. Where all eyes size you up. Chances are, that's the room my mother spoke of. And she also spoke of a Medusa. Should I go and try to find the creature now? Feeleth his death is near, his brain is a fragment of amber. Amber Crystals. The Company by Rembrandt. Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. Devil's thorn, I'll keep it.
I've got to find out what Mother was trying to do with her. The Medusa. A hero armed with a sword? Hmm. A hero with a lantern. And the last one holding a shield. I'll stake my life on it. All the statues form a single scene together. The poor devils are about to face the beast. Let's give them a helping hand. Sake, Emily. You scared the pants off me. Don't ever do that again. Well, keep your nose out of my business then. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop fooling around and tell me what you're doing here. I was feeling a bit peckish. I went in search of the kitchen and I ended up here. Your sense of direction is mind boggling, isn't it? Well, no matter. I'll tolerate your presence this one time. Now, since you're here, make yourself useful. Look around on your side. I'll do the same on mine. And if you find anything of interest, let me know. Oh yeah, in your dreams. At your service, madam. Is the author of this work. It talks about his passion for art. Oh, looks like a pamphlet on different political regimes, written by Mortimer himself. Amber. Interesting. A manor in Maine. Hundreds of acres of land in Catalonia. Properties in Shanghai. Incredible. Some of these deeds are over 600 years old. And all signed by the hand of Mortimer. I wonder if that's what inspired my mother's attention. How come all these documents have Mortimer's signature on them? Do you think all these properties really belong to him? Maybe Mortimer is immortal or capable of living for a very long time like Methuselah. A first smile. Careful. Keep that up and soon you'll end up laughing. Carry on sprouting inanities like that and indeed I might. These documents are intriguing, but do you really think that's what attracted your mother's attention here? And how do you know my mother was interested in this room? I didn't know, I just supposed she was. And you just confirmed it. So, do you think she found what she came for? I don't know. She was obsessed with Mortimer, and I must confess, these property deeds are troubling. If that's the case, why would she have left them? Once again, I don't know. We'll have to ask her when we find her. And what's your take? Why keep such a collection hidden in a secret room? Any thoughts? Mortimer has every reason in the world to conceal it, even if only to keep it from people like us. 
Hey, Emily, we're not thieves. We're only looking. I wonder why my mother didn't make it clear what she was interested in here. She didn't have time to write it down, or maybe she wasn't sure of what she was looking for. Or she wanted to protect her discoveries. It's disturbing. You'll just have to search the rest of the room. Maybe you'll find something. What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. We just met, Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? Nothing. I have done absolutely nothing for you. No to this, no to that. You ask for proof of trust, but when you get it, you turn a deaf ear. You are defiant, evasive, and paranoid. Go question your own motives. I've done all I can. All right, fine. There's no point getting on your high horse, you know. So I'm wary, I grant you that. I'll admit, you are fairly reliable. That's it? I was expecting more. Well, I'm prepared to trust you when it comes to choosing a French cheese. But I've nothing to gain by confiding in you any further than that. Nothing to gain? Damn it, Emily! I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help? Just like everyone. You have your strengths and your weaknesses. And there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha! And I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you? You think your scathing wit protects you, but in fact, it makes you blind. No sooner have people introduced themselves than you already see them in a bad light. You play the part of a strong woman, and yes, you are a strong woman, of course. But what I see is a sensitive young lady who lacks self-confidence. Stop adopting a defensive posture and you'll see just how quickly new doors will open. There is some truth to what you say. I might have some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. And I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? Yes, it's perfectly clear. You're already working with someone. Ah, well spotted, Louis. I already have a work partner. I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me. But I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? Mm, no, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler. So, your partner is... Your sister. She's your partner. She's the one you're looking for. Well, I am impressed. How the devil did you guess I had a sister? Virtually no one even knows. When it comes to getting results, you are very good. I grant you that. You deserve to know why the sight of the cameo pendant affected me so strongly. I thought it belonged to Emma, my twin sister. Oh, now I get why you said you had a memory for two. Yes, you can't imagine to what extent though. As children, everyone got us mixed up. So one day we decided to play along. Since then, we have become one and the same. We have officially erased the identity of my sister, Emma. Emily Hillsborough. The woman with two faces. Clever. But isn't it complicated? How do you make it work? One of us has no existence in the outside world. We share everything. First for one, then for the other. We dress the same, wear the same makeup, we speak the same. We've learned to act as one. When we accept a mission, we both turn up. This time, though, she went ahead and I was meant to wait for her on the mainland. She was meant to meet Sir Holm and bring back the details so we could work out who would follow up. And there was a problem? She was supposed to return for Mortimer's one week ago. 
The boat turned up at Plymouth, but alas, no trace of my sister. Instead, a sailor passed me a message from home, notifying me of her sudden disappearance. So, my mother and your sister go missing just a few days apart. That's strange. Maybe their disappearances are linked. It's clearly a possibility, but up to now I haven't found a trace of either of them. None of this is very reassuring. By the way, Louis, now that you are in on the secret, you are obliged to keep it to yourself. Or you will pay very dearly. Don't worry. Your secret is safe with me. It's time to leave. So, what do you think of our first adventure? I must admit, it has been fun by your side. Same here. Oh, she's been drinking too much again. Louie, I need to talk to you right now. Good evening, Elizabeth. Actually, this is not a good time. I'm begging you, please, don't leave me alone. I'll be waiting for you in your room, but don't be late. I was sure there was a certain je ne sais quoi between us. Louis, we need to talk now. Otherwise, it'll be too late. Looks like Elizabeth really needs me, but if I start talking to her, for sure Emily won't wait for me. What should I do? Sorry, Emily, but I can't leave Elizabeth like this. All right, Elizabeth. How can I help? Thank you. Come on, follow me. Well, Elizabeth, what was so urgent? For God's sakes, what happened in here? I really need to talk to you, Louis, right now. Does Lord Mortimer know the mess you've made of your room? Listen to me, damn it! My days are numbered. Elizabeth, I don't know if it's about my mother again, but I'm telling you, you've nothing to be afraid of. She didn't come here for you. I saw her. Saw who? You saw my mother? When? Just last night. I went out to walk along the cliff top and I saw her in the distance. She tried to hide right away, but I'm sure it was her. Are you saying you recognized my mother in the middle of the night while she was hiding? Yes, Louis. I know it was her. You just said she was far away, right? In the middle of the night. And the exterior of the island isn't exactly well lit. Listen, I'm telling you it was her. She doesn't hesitate on her answers. She's not trembling. She's really convinced of what she's seen. Did you talk to each other? No, she was far away. I I didn't make any noise, and then she was gone. Have you told anyone you've seen her? Sir Holm? Mortimer? You don't understand. It's her. She's here. Yes, I understand. No, you're not listening. The moment I saw her, I was overcome by spasms. She's here. I'm telling you, it was her. Yes, I need something to calm me down. I'll drink with you, but let's go easy on it, okay? I don't know where she gets her rot cut from, but frankly, it's disgusting. You know, Louis, when I came here, it was in the hope of getting help. I've only just now realized that I've been drawn here into a trap. Whoa. The alcohol's... <sighs> gone to my head. Here, the Condemned's last drink. Man, I... I need to take it easy with the booze. At this rate, I won't last the night. 
Let's go easy on the drinking, okay? Alcohol won't solve our problems. Ugh. The second one isn't any easier. So, do you want to know why she did all those things to me or not? Even if it changes the image you have of her forever? What was she trying to cure you of then? Of the one illness she never managed to treat me for. Come on, Elizabeth. We have to finish what we started. I feel all dizzy. There must have been a reason. Just tell me. Tell me what my mother treated you for. She wanted to silence them. What? What are you talking about? Silence what? The voices. The voices in my head. They speak to me, Louis. They've always told me what to do. They say nasty things to me. Elizabeth, are, are you saying that, that spirits talk to you? You're right. Sometimes there are several voices. How did you know? No, listen, I, I don't know anything. I, I'm just repeating what you said. They want me. Want me just for themselves. They talk to me all the time. Yet your mother did everything to make them go away. Ever since I was little. And look at the result! It's impossible, Mother. You spent your life trying to prove that the supernatural doesn't exist. Why punish this poor girl? Oh, shit. What has she done to you? Uh-oh, Louis. Are you starting to believe me? No, but... Too bad it's all been for nothing. They're still there, you know. What do you mean? They're still talking to you? All the time. Despite everything Sarah put me through, I still hear them. And here I am on a lost island, knowing that no one knows me. And I find myself here at the exact same time as her. You see? You understand? You sense it too. I'm going to die here. I beg you, tell me you believe me. I'm here, Elizabeth. I'm right here with you. And I 